So microequity started its life in 2006. In 2008, um, we went into the funds management business and in March 2009, we launched our flagship deep value fund, which is a micro cap, small cap fund. We are a specialised micro cap and small cap value based investor. We specialise in investing in industrial companies that are profitable and have at least two consecutive years of profitability. Our revenue model is actually quite simple. We have a recurring revenue stream, which is our management and admin fees, which we invoice the funds that we manage on a monthly basis. And that is a recurring revenue with high levels of visibility. We also have a performance fee revenue, which is non-recurring in nature. That performance revenue stream is subject to us meeting performance hurdles on each of our individual funds. If we meet those funds, then we are entitled to earn a performance fee. So those are our two major sources of revenue. So the investment management team is highly proven. The, we are a four person investment management team of which the three senior members have been basically th there from day one. Um, we all have long term incentive packages that are tied to the investment performance of the funds, manage of the funds that we manage. Additionally, the investment management team also likes to co-invest in the funds that we manage on behalf of our clients. So there is another layer of significant uh, alignment of interest between us and our, and our end clients. Like the businesses that we invest in, Microequities is a profitable business. We've been profitable essentially from day one. And the company uh, last year, for example, made $9.4 million profit, of which we paid out to our shareholders $8.3 million by way of fully franked um, dividends. So we've always traditionally paid dividends. Uh, typically, we will pay dividends and the company has a payout uh, dividend policy of paying out 70 to 100% of its cash uh, net profit. Uh, we intend to pay dividends every six months and shareholders that invest in the IPO will be entitled for the second half dividend which we envisage we will pay in August of September this year. So we believe within the ASX the cohort of companies that are going to engender the fastest growth and the most sustainable long-term growth are within the small cap and micro cap. So for investors that are seeking to maximise their long-term investment performance, they should concentrate their investment in small cap and micro cap funds. And that's what we've actually decided to do as, as professional investors. So we invest in what we think over the long term will deliver by far the best um, investment returns for our clients. Our flagship deep value fund, um, has, who, who, which has been running for over nine years, has returned close to 24% per annum compound return to our investors after all our fees. So it's one of the best performing funds uh, in Australia. So it's a partial sell down by three of the largest shareholders to facilitate the ASX listing. The ASX requires a 20% minimum free float and if these three substantial shareholders did not facilitate that sell down, we wouldn't be able to list. The management team will retain over 56% of the equity in the business post IPO and the board and the management team will retain over 71% of the equity. We are a profitable business that delivers profits to our shareholders and we actually give back capital. There was no sound capital management reason for us to raise any capital. In fact, we expect to be returning capital back to our shareholders in September later this year when we pay our dividends. So it just didn't make any sense to, to actually raise capital. <music>